So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I found it a while back under a stack of papers on your desk, and I've been reworking it for quite some time. Oh, interesting, and a little intrusive. What's it called? It's called Jiminy Man. What? Jiminy Man? Do, do you mean Gemini Man? Oh, yeah, that does make more sense. Right, okay, that kind of rings a bell. That thing's been floating around for a while. Remind me of the plot, though? It's about this guy, Henry, who's on the run from a younger version of himself that's trying to kill him. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that script's from, like, the 90s. Well, this is gonna feel like it should have come out in the 90s, sir. Wasn't there a movie called Looper a couple of years ago where a guy's younger self is trying to kill him? Yeah, but I mean, that was made by Ryan Johnson, and a whole lot of people think that guy ruined Star Wars. What was the last thing you worked on? The final season of Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Plus, this movie doesn't involve time travel, you know? The younger version of himself is actually a clone that was made by this bad guy. And who's the bad guy? Clay Varys? Isn't, isn't that a venereal disease? No, it's a person. If you say so. So anyway, this guy Henry's like the best assassin in the world, right? We're gonna start the movie with him sniping a guy on a moving train from super far away. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Extremely cool, but why wouldn't he just do that when the train is stopped? Because this is cooler. Oh, okay, gotcha. And Henry wants to retire because now he's in his 50s and after 70 kills, he's starting to feel bad. Okay. Then Henry finds out that he was tricked and some of the people he killed weren't necessarily bad guys. Oh, okay, so the government wants to take him out to cover their tracks? Exactly, so then he and this woman, Danny, that was spying on him, go on the run. Oh, Danny, huh? What's her deal? Oh, she's a badass. She's gonna have this fight against this secret ops guy, right? Right. And he's gonna be like, where's Henry? You can tell me now, or you can tell me in five minutes without your teeth. Oh, very cool line. And then she's gonna pin him and be like, who sent you? You can tell me now, or you can tell me in five minutes without your teeth. Oh, she uno reversed him. Yeah, and then Henry walks in and she's like, I know who sent him. And he's like, how'd you figure it out? And she drops some teeth in his hand. Hands. Wait, so she picked up his teeth after knocking them out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? In case Henry asked, I guess. So so if he hadn't asked her that, she just would have walked around with teeth? I guess so, yeah. Kind of weird when you put it that way. A very risky punchline. So anyway, then they go meet Henry's friend Baron, who's a pilot, so he can fly them all over the place. And what's his deal? Well, he's a pilot, so he can fly them all over the place. Oh, very cool. So then they're gonna go to Columbia, but this assassin shows up who looks exactly like a younger version of Henry. Is it because he's a young version of Henry? It is. That guy Clay cloned Henry, then raised the clone as his own son, named him Junior. Not much effort put into that name at all. So then there's gonna be this big motorcycle chase, and Junior is gonna motorcycle whip Henry. Motorcycle whip him? It's like a pistol whip, but with a motorcycle. Oh my god. So then eventually, the good guys are gonna figure out that this young guy that looks exactly like Henry is actually a clone of Henry. Wait, how long into the movie are we at this point? Oh, at least 45 minutes. That is a crazy long time. Yeah, well, we're gonna wanna hold off and tease it for a while so it'll be a big reveal. But won't every single person in the audience already know that it's gonna be a clone of himself? I mean, they'll have seen the trailers and the posters. Right, probably. So that slow burn of a reveal isn't gonna pay off for anyone at all? Probably not, no. But it'll show that the movie takes itself seriously. Oh, I guess that is more important than people's enjoyment. So what else happens? Well, basically, the good guys are gonna travel around and meet with various exposition dumps. Various what? Sorry, I meant characters. Oh, okay. Yeah, like this Russian guy wants Clay Vera's dead, right? So Henry's like, well, why don't you just send a missile to kill him? And the Russian guy's like, that's what we're doing. You are the missile. Oh, that's a pretty cool line, but why don't they send a missile if that's an option? Well, it doesn't matter if it's an option. What matters is that it's a cool line. Right, but like, why don't they do that, though? I don't know. Well, okay, then. So anyway, eventually Henry and Junior are gonna team up, because they're both mad at Clay. Oh, why is Junior mad at Clay now? Well, he's all like, you made a person out of another person. That's how all people are made. Right, but he's mad that he's a Clone. Oh, okay, right. So eventually there's gonna be this big showdown between the good guys and Clay and his soldiers. Oh, what's that gonna be like? Remember at the end of the first Rambo movie where they fight in a small town that has no civilians and straight up destroy the place? Yeah. Yeah, so... You know, that, pretty much exactly. Oh, okay. And then Junior's gonna knock Clay unconscious. Oh, well, great, so it's over. Well, no, because he leaves without tying him up or restraining him in any way. Isn't Junior supposed to be, like, the best in the world? Why wouldn't he do that? Because the movie's not over. Right, okay. So then Clay wakes up, and he sends in the ultimate weapon. This guy's like a ninja. He doesn't feel any pain. Oh, sounds like he's gonna be hard to beat. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they shoot him a bunch of times with explosive rounds, and, uh, that does the trick. 
oh, well, great. And then they take off this guy's mask and reveal that it's another clone of Henry. So how come Clay didn't send this guy to kill Henry in the first place? So the movie can happen. Seems like a lot of stuff is happening just so the movie can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the deal? Are there like a bunch of Henry clones? Well, Clay's gonna give a speech about like an army of Henry clones. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then we're, you know, not gonna go anywhere with that idea. Oh, okay. So then Junior's about to kill Clay, but Henry's like, no, if you pull that trigger, it's gonna mess you up for life. I'll murder your dad in front of you and that'll be okay. That makes a lot of sense. It does, and so then he does, and everybody gets a happy ending. Junior goes to like happy college with zero PTSD. Oh, happy endings are tight. That's... Okay, so what do you think? Well, to be honest, it feels kind of empty. Right, yeah, it totally is. But I'm hoping people are gonna be distracted by the cool visual effects. Oh yeah, fingers crossed. I was also thinking we could shoot it in 4K and 120 frames per second. What, can any US theaters actually play that as intended? I'm sure it's possible, sir. Well, okay then, let's do it. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking Aladdin, but in live action. Oh, I think we already have a movie called Aladdin, though. Right, so I figure we could, you know, do it again, but in a slightly different way. Is there something wrong with the original? Absolutely not. Everybody loves it. Robin Williams is irreplaceable as the genie. Okay, but you're saying we should replace him? Oh, yeah, of course. So we just... Make it again? Yeah, that's right. I think people are just feeling nostalgic about the original. You know, it was so great. Is there a reason they can't just rewatch it? No, there's not. It's very easy to find. So, so what would be the point of taking something that people love and trying to recreate it several decades later? I mean, best case scenario, it's as good as the original. And saying that we should do it because filmmaking technology has improved isn't a valid argument. Like, should we try to repaint the Mona Lisa because we have better paints now? I just don't see why we would do this. I mean, because money? Oh, money? I love money. Yeah, 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 we'd make a bunch of it. So you make people feel nostalgic and they give you dollars? They do, many of them. Oh, wow, 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 I'm all in. Fantastic. So what do we do? Do we do it like shot for shot or, or what? Well, no, I think we have to make a couple of things different, you know, to justify charging people like $15 for a movie they've already seen. Oh, I have an idea. You know that scene in the original where Aladdin gives some kids a loaf of bread? Yeah. Well, maybe in this one, instead of that, he gives them some dates. Yeah, we can do that for sure. Great, and then the rest could be shot for shot, I guess. Well, I think we need to change a little more than that, you know? Make it a little longer, too? Oh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, I'm thinking we should slap another 30 minutes onto this thing. Oh, kids love sitting for long periods of time. That is what they're known for. Wow, and who do you think we should get to play the genie? I mean, they have some big shoes to fill. Well, I was thinking we could maybe reach out to Will Smith. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm thinking he could bring a couple of woos and ha-has to the table. People do love those noises. Plus, we can have him do one of those end credit raps. Another one? Another one. Oh, actually, you just gave me an idea. We should get DJ Khaled to come yell DJ DJ Khaled. Oh yeah, people love that too. People make a lot of money when that guy says his own name. I was also thinking we can make the middle part of this movie an unofficial sequel to Hitch. Oh, so Will Smith helps a guy find love? Exactly. I love it. The one thing I'm concerned about is that it might be difficult to make Will Smith actually look like a genie. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, I figure we could slap a blue CGI recreation of his face on a blue CGI bodybuilder. Oh, that sounds like it might give people nightmares. Maybe, but you know my one problem with the original movie is that the genie didn't have a six-pack or extremely realistic nipples. What about the whole thing about him floating? Like, his lower half was like smoke. Well, we'll make his lower half smoke when he's the genie, but when he takes the form of a human, he'll give himself legs. Oh, he's gonna take the form of a normal man? Oh yeah, a whole lot. Because he has a crush on one of Jasmine's handmaidens. So you're saying the genie gets aroused by human women? He does, and I have extremely graphic sketches of how that can work right here. Oh, definitely don't show me those. Okay, I'll email them to you. I'll ignore it and block you. Well, okay then. Then. Anyway, I was thinking we could also get Guy Ritchie to direct this. Oh, why him? So he can do that speed up and slow down effect once or twice. Does he have experience with musicals? I think he directed a Madonna music video, you know, back at the turn of the century. Works for me. Great. And what about Jafar? What's going on with him? Oh, well, you know how in the original he was a scary older man with a deep intimidating voice like, soon I will be the Sultan. Yeah, classic villain. People love him. Exactly. So what I'm thinking is we could, you know, go the opposite way with it. What? Yeah, we get a way younger guy with a soft little voice like, soon I will be the sultan. Oh, that sounds significantly less intimidating. Oh, it will be, but this way we could cast somebody young who's gonna look good on a magazine cover. What? Why would we want that? So we can get hot Jafar trending. That's free promotion. Oh, profiting off of thirsty people is tight. Yeah, it is. And what's going on with Jasmine in this one? Oh, well, we're gonna tweak her story a bit and make it so that she actually wants to be the sultan. Oh, very progressive and empowering. Yeah, we're gonna give her this big new song called Speechless, where she sings about how she won't be silenced. 
Wow, how did the other characters react to that? They won't. She sings it to herself in her imagination. She's the only one who can hear her big song about not being silenced. That's right. Well, okay then. And when is this going to happen in the movie? Right when Jafar takes over and has her taken by the guards. She has time to sing a big song. Well, the movie's literally going to stop so she can have a little music video. Oh yeah, I guess we need to shove it in there somehow. And after her song, she's going to give a big speech to the guards and convince them not to follow Jafar, even though he's the new sultan. And Jafar just lets her do that? He does. He just sits there. I guess he was moved by the song. The one she sang alone in her head? That's the one. Wow. And so yeah, there's going to be this big climax to the movie, like Jafar is going to teleport Aladdin over to him. Oh wow, I can't wait to hear him do the evil reprise of that song Prince Ali. Oh, he's not going to do that. Is he going to turn into a giant cobra? He's not, no. Is Jasmine going to get stuck in a big hourglass? No, no. So what's going to happen? Well, Jafar's bird Yago is going to become a... You know, bigger bird. Is that more menacing than a giant cobra? It is if you're scared of large birds. I was a little freaked out by Sesame Street growing up. Same here. So he's gonna chase Jasmine and Aladdin. I thought you said Jafar can teleport people over to him. Yeah, but he's gonna go with this big bird strategy instead. Well, okay then. And is Yago gonna have a fun personality like in the original? No, not at all. He's pretty much a normal parrot. Oh, do we know anyone who can voice a bird? So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I already have Will Smith attached to it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his son, Jaden. Oh, okay. Oh, come on, sir. Don't react like that. He's the best actor for the job. Well, we haven't auditioned anyone. Yeah, no, I know. But Will Smith assured me he's the next big thing in Hollywood. Sounds like a pretty intense case of nepotism. Well, I'm pretty sure their health insurance will cover that. What? I just think people love Will Smith movies, you know? And with Jaden there, it's like two Smiths for the price of one. It will be nice to see that signature Will Smith charm on screen. Well, actually, his character's whole thing is that he's stone-faced and has no emotion whatsoever. Oh, kind of feels like that'll take away from the fun of a Will Smith movie. Well, this way we really give Jaden a chance to shine. Can Jaden shine? I guess we'll find out, sir. Okay. Anyway, so this is gonna be the story of a super successful famous guy and his son, who's not as talented, but the whole family wants him to follow in his dad's footsteps. Yeah, agreed, 100%. No, sorry, that's the story of the movie. Oh, it is. It is, sir. It's a sci-fi movie called After Earth, and humans have left Earth to go live on another planet. Okay. And Will Smith is gonna play this guy called Cypher Rage. Pretty sure I just unlocked that character in Mortal Kombat. But then aliens are gonna drop these monsters called Ursas, and these things are specifically bred and designed to kill humans. That's not good. Yeah, but the thing is, these things are blind, but they can smell the pheromones that humans release when they're afraid. They were specifically bred to kill humans, but the only sense they have is that they can smell fear. Can they smell blood? No, just fear. So if you can manage to not be afraid, you're invisible to them. It's called ghosting. Okay, but how do monsters move around in the environment without any sense? I don't know, but they also impale humans on trees as a way to make other humans feel fear. How do they even know that the trees are there? Trees don't get afraid. No idea, sir. But anyway, Cypher Rage, he's very good at ghosting, so he's kind of a big deal. Oh, so he can straight up walk around and shoot them all? That's pretty cool. Yeah, you'd think so, but for some reason in the future, they only use these cutlass blade weapons. Seems like a gun would be a whole lot more effective. Yeah, but then these monsters wouldn't even be a threat, really. So, so why don't they... So the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. Anyway, so his kid, Katai, he wants to be like his dad but he's just not as good, you know? He can't even ghost. Okay. And later they're gonna be on this ship and it's gonna end up crashing on Earth. That's where I live. Same here, sir. So Cypher Rage and his son, they're the only ones who survived the crash out of the whole crew. Wow, what are the odds of that? Oh, I have no idea, sir. I've never been good at math, to be honest, or science, or writing. Doing things is hard. Yeah, so they both survive, but Cypher has two broken legs. Uh, you need those to walk. Exactly, you do. So now Katai, he has to find an emergency beacon in the tail of the ship, which is a hundred kilometers away. Okay, big journey. But also one of those monsters was in a cage on the ship, so that's probably running around free. That's not good. And so Cypher explains to his son that, you know, everything on Earth has evolved to kill humans. Oh, it did? Yeah, pretty scary, right? When did when did that happen? In the past thousand years, I guess. Oh, pretty sure evolution takes longer than that. Well, debatable. Also, if humans left, how did things evolve to kill something that's not even there? Oh, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about evolution, because this is the whole premise of the movie we're talking about. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thank you, sir. So Katai takes off, but his dad, he's gonna be able to talk to him and see him the whole time. Oh, that'll come in handy. Yeah, so Katai is out there, and almost immediately, Cypher detects an enemy approaching on the radar. Uh-oh. And it turns out to be a baboon, so Cypher is like, you know, don't move at all. Well, well, thank God he has his dad in his ear. Yeah, 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 so Katai throws a rock at the baboon, what? and then the radar lights up, and it turns out there are a bunch of baboons. How come those didn't show up on the radar as they were approaching, like the other one? Unclear. Oh, sudden baboon. 
baboons are tight. Yeah, so Katai's gonna have to run super fast because the sudden baboons, they're pissed. Very exciting. And he's gonna get away, but then he's gonna get a parasite on him and he's gonna turn into Will Smith and Hitch and then he's gonna have to inject stuff into his heart and he's gonna pass out. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I mean, I guess that can happen too. It will. Well, okay then. Oh, also, I forgot to mention that there's not enough oxygen on Earth, so Katai needs to use these little capsules to stay alive. Oh, because, like, humans destroyed all the trees and stuff? No, there are just a ton of trees. It's basically a jungle. Don't trees produce oxygen? I don't know. I guess they evolved to not produce a lot, so humans would die. And what about the animals? They're okay with the lack of oxygen? Yeah, they're fine with it, because they also evolved in the past thousand years. I truly feel like that's not how evolution works. Also, the temperature drops to below freezing every single night. And all the animals, they're cool with that, too? Well, there are these hot spots that don't freeze every night, so, you know, Katai has to make his way to one of those every night. Well, won't those spots be crowded with wild animals? Somehow, no, they won't be. Well, okay, then. Oh, also, you know that thing where movies have, like, a single flashback, but they break it up into little tidbits and spread it out throughout the whole movie? Oh, we're gonna have some flashback tidbits? We're gonna have some flashback tidbits. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, it turns out that Katai had a sister who was killed by a monster, but he was safe because he stayed inside a little glass terrarium thing. Oh, so if they block off the fear pheromones, the monsters leave them alone? That's right. So do they make themselves, like, has hazmat suits so the monsters can't detect them? Oh, that would have been a good idea, but instead they make suits that turn baby blue when you're cold. Oh, why would they have a suit do that? Well, to let the person wearing it know when it's cold. Cold lets you know when it's cold. And so will this suit. I guess that's helpful. Anyway, so at a certain point, Katai ends up breaking some of his oxygen capsules and his dad finds out. Oh, so what does he do? Well, he's like, abort mission, son, come back to the ship. But aren't they both gonna die if he doesn't get the beacon? That's right, yeah. So he's telling his son, never mind, come back and let's just, you know, straight up die. That's right, yeah. Interesting strategy. Strategy. But then Katai jumps off a frickin' cliff and gets picked up by a CGI bird. Oh. Okay. And then the bird tries to feed Katai to the baby birds, and then some big evil cats show up, and Katai fights them, but all the baby birds, they die. Sure, you know, those things may as well happen. And then later, Katai's gonna be stuck out in the cold, and the bird's gonna show up and keep him warm. Oh, the bird protected him because he unsuccessfully protected the babies? Yeah, maybe it makes sense for a bird to do that. Anyway, then the bird dies. What? Why? Well, because of the extreme cold. Which it has not evolved to survive. Now you're getting it, sir. I truly- I'm not. Anyway, finally, Katai finds a beacon, but then he's gonna encounter one of those fear monsters. Oh man, gonna be tough to battle a blind fear monster, I bet. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, pretty much out of nowhere, he decides to become completely emotionless, which is maybe a nice message for this movie, and you know, that works like magic. Well, well, thank God the monsters have literally no other senses to go off of. Yeah, things really worked out for the Rage family. And so they both survive? They do, and then they see some whales, because we mentioned Moby Dick a couple of times in the movie. So what do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like he won't be doing much, but if Will Smith believes in this movie, I mean, I don't think it can fail. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's gonna be called Independence Day. Okay, so like a historical drama based around the signing of the Declaration of Independence. No, 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 like a sci-fi action movie based around America kicking alien butt. Oh! And the aliens going pew, 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 pew. With the spaceships? With their freaking spaceships, sir. Oh, hell yeah, get out of here, history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the beginning of the movie, we're gonna see this big shadow starting to cover the moon. That's not good. The moon is pretty close to Earth. It is, so then down on Earth, humans, they start to notice. They're like, whoa, this thing is huge. It's like a quarter of the size of the moon. And they only discover this once it reached the moon? Somehow, yes, that's right. And then we're gonna start to meet the characters of the movie. Okay, and who are these characters? We're gonna be following the president, Thomas Whitmore, the first lady, Marilyn, the president's advisor, Constance, her ex-husband, David, his father, Julius, a pilot, Captain Hiller, his wife, Jasmine, who's a stripper, also her son, also an alcoholic crop duster, pilot, Russell and his whole family. Wow, that's a lot of people. Are you gonna have enough time for character development? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. We're just gonna assign them each a broad stereotype and kind of roll with that. That works for me. Anyway, so these aliens, they set up a bunch of massive flying saucers directly over popular landmarks. Why do they do that? Because it's gonna look cool in the trailer. Oh, I'm glad that these aliens are considerate of our marketing strategies. And this guy, David, he realizes that all these ships are communicating and coordinating using our satellites. The high-tech aliens don't have better means of communication? Well, we're gonna find out that they're telepathic, but they're gonna use our satellites. Why? So David can pick up on it and the movie can happen. That works. And he's gonna find out that they plan to attack in six hours. Six hours? Why the long wait? So the humans have a bit of time to prepare and the movie can happen. That works. So then the aliens do attack and they destroy a bunch of cities and there's gonna be a bunch of crazy action. Yeah, what kind of action are we talking? Well, a bunch of landmarks are gonna blow up. Jasmine's gonna be in an exploding tunnel and her and her dog are just barely gonna make it into a little 
doorway and avoid the fireball? Fire can't go through doorways? No, it can't. I mean, fire doesn't have eyes, so it doesn't see them turn the corner. And the intense heat doesn't affect them or the lack of oxygen. Doesn't fire use oxygen? Isn't that how fire works? Oh, you said fireworks. That's fun. Oh, fireworks are tight. I forgot what I asked you. Yeah, same here. All I could think of are fireworks now. Same here. So what else happens? Well, David and his father, they're going to end up with the president and his staff. Okay. And David's father is going to be like, hey, what about Area 51? Didn't you guys find aliens or something? And the president's going to be like, yeah, no, that never happened. Oh, bummer. But then the Secretary of Defense, he's going to be like, actually, no, yeah, we did find some aliens there and a spaceship, too. If he knew about that, why didn't he mention that as soon as aliens arrived? I don't know. Fair enough. So they head over to Area 51 and this wacky scientist guy, he's like, yeah, this spaceship has been acting up for the past 24 hours. It's kind of crazy. And nobody informed the White House? They didn't, no. Well, okay then. Oh, also, we're going to have this big battle between fighter jets and spaceships and that guy, Captain Hiller, he's going to be right in the thick of it. Very, very cool. And his best friend's going to be killed, so he's going to be super emotional about that for like an entire shot. Wow, yeah, got to give the guy some time to grieve for sure. And then he's going to be chased around by an alien spaceship and he's going to manage to make it crash. Very exciting. And then the alien ship opens up and an alien pops out and he punches it right in the exoskeleton and knocks it out for several hours somehow. Wow, 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 wow. wow. And he looks at the alien and he's like, welcome to Earth. That's a good line. And then he grabs a cigar and he's like, now that's what I call a close encounter. This guy's got a bunch of jokes. His friend just died. Yeah, he's got a ton of jokes. So then he brings the alien over to Area 51. Okay. And so people start dissecting the alien, but then it kills a bunch of people and it mind controls the main scientist guy. Oh, interesting. So it's going to attempt some kind of clever escape where it pretends to be the scientist. That's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's not going to do that. Instead, it's just going to be like, release me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Different strategy. Yeah, he's going to be like, release me. You're all going to die. And so the humans, they shoot it dead. I mean, I don't know what the alien was expecting on that one. Yeah, hard to say. So then Captain Hiller, he borrows a helicopter and he goes to pick up his wife, who, as it turns out, is hanging out with the first lady. Wow, well, it's going to be hard for him to find them in the midst of a destroyed city. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he just, he finds them. Oh, are they signaling to him through the darkness somehow or something? Yeah, he just, he just lands right in front of them and he finds them. Oh, well, I mean, okay, great. So anyway, then that David guy, he figures out a plan for defeating the aliens. Oh, and what's his plan? He wants to give them a computer virus on their mothership. Oh, a computer virus? Yep, because as you know, computers are capable of literally anything and all their operating systems are the same and they're made of magic. Oh, I am well aware that computers can do anything. Isn't that right, computer? That is correct, producer guy. Would you like a hamburger? Here is a hamburger. Maybe later. I'm all good for now, computer. Thanks. No worries. You just let me know, okay? So what happens next? Well, they let all the other countries know what their plan is, and all the other countries are like, finally, the Americans have a plan. All other countries are helpless. I was actually surprised in my research that there are actually, you know, other countries. I was also quite shocked when I found that out last week. Pretty crazy. So how do they plan on getting this virus onto the alien computer? Well, they have this old ship from the 1950s, and Captain Hiller, he saw the aliens flying once. Oh, that's right. He saw them fly once, so he could totally pilot that thing. Obviously. So he and David, they head up to space with the computer virus. This is all making a ton of sense. It sure is, sir. So they head up to the mothership, and they're let right in. And the fact that they show up on a decades-old missing ship doesn't raise any red flags? It doesn't, no. Fantastic. So then down on Earth, there's this massive dogfight around this big alien ship. Seems kind of irrelevant to the story. What are the dogs fighting about? No, these are actually humans inside jets fighting aliens and spaceships. Oh, okay, yeah. Don't even show the dogs, I say. Yeah, sure. Okay, good idea, sir. So then the humans, they all run out of missiles, except for that crop duster guy, Russell. Okay. And his missile gets jammed, so he flies right into the ship into a weak spot, and he's like, I'm back. What? Because he had been abducted by aliens, like, years before, and they did weird stuff to his butt, probably. Oh, so you do have character development. Yeah, I guess I do. I love it. So then Captain Hiller and David, they get back down to Earth, and they have cigars, and they have women, and everything worked out. Well, millions of people died though, right? Yes, but America. That's a good point. So what do you think of the movie? Well, other than that weird dog moment you tried to squeeze in, I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you. And I mean, someday if we're really, really desperate for ideas, we could find a way to make a sequel.
So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's based off a comic book series called The Men in Black. Okay. And so we're gonna start with a van of illegal immigrants being stopped by the cops and then having these two men in black show up. Hey, that's the name of the thing! It sure is, and so they tell the cops, hey, we're from Division 6 and we need to take one of these illegal aliens. And the cops let them? Yeah, but after the men in black leave, the cops are like, there is no Division 6, this is BS. So why did they even let them take the guy? I don't know. Fair enough. So then it's gonna turn out that this illegal alien was actually an illegal alien disguised as an illegal alien. Right, okay. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. There's a double meaning. Yeah, yeah, pretty straightforward. But why would he even disguise himself as that? Well, because he's trying to sneak into the United States. Then wouldn't it make more sense for him to disguise himself as an American? Well, yeah, but then I wouldn't get to make that super clever illegal alien joke. Oh, okay, gotcha. You really like that joke. So anyway, then one of the cops sees the alien because the men in black only took it like 10 feet away and that sends it into a murderer rage. Why? Because I want the situation where the men in black shoot the alien and the cop gets covered in slimy goo. Did you say slimy goo? I did. Oh, slimy goo is tight. That's the funniest thing you could cover someone with. Well, I'm glad you said that because we're going to have a ton of slimy goo in this movie. It's going to be the main gag in a shocking number of scenes. Hell yeah, that automatically makes scenes funny. It sure does. So we're going to have slimy goo splashing all over the place every chance we get throughout this whole thing. That's not going to get old at all. I know. Wow. Anyway, so then because the older agent was slow to draw his gun, he's gonna retire. Oh, he is? Yeah, and so the younger agent, K, is gonna use this neuralizer thing to wipe his memory. When they get back home from the desert? No, right then and there. That's super inconsiderate, but okay. And so then the main character is this New York cop, James, who's being considered as the replacement for that old guy. Why is he being considered? Because he chased down a bad guy who turned out to be an alien. Why was he chasing him? We'll never find out, but he turned out to be an alien. Did he know that he was an alien? alien when he started chasing him? No, but he chased him down for a very long time. So a police officer just doing his job was enough to get him considered for the men in black? Apparently so, sir. So then James enters this testing period where all the other candidates are like super serious military types. Oh man, I imagine it's gonna be tough for a New York cop to be chosen for a secret government organization. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, he does two tests and shows that he can think outside the box and that's all they needed to see. So what are the tests? Well, in the first test, they had to fill out these papers inside these weird egg chairs, and James went and grabbed the table. Right, okay. And the second one is this shooting range thing, and all the other candidates are shooting the aliens, but James is the only one that shoots a little girl in the face. What? Yeah, he's like, this little girl is in a bad part of town, and she's holding books that are way too advanced for her, so, you know, he shoots her in the face. And that was the right thing to do? Yeah, she has no business carrying those advanced books around. They could have been her older sister's books or something. Well, the men in black are looking for someone that would shoot a little girl in the face for something like that. And those are the two tests, the table and the child killing? That's it. Wow, it feels like they should definitely have their agents go through more rigorous testing than that. Yeah, you'd think so, but that's literally all they need to see. Well, okay then. So then James is gonna become one of the men in black. Wow. Yeah, they show him around the office and they slowly erase every letter from his name except the first one. Very dramatic use of the delete key. Yeah, and then he touches this ball that bounces around the office and destroys a bunch of stuff. Why would they leave a dangerous ball like that just lying out in the open? So we could have some slapstick comedy, sir. Oh, the characters left that out for us. That's very nice of them. Sure is, sir. And so what do J and K have to go up against in the movie? Well, there's this bug alien that's wearing a dead farmer's skin and going on a sugar-fueled rampage. And what's he trying to do? He's trying to get his hands on a marble that's actually a galaxy. Okay. Yeah, so he goes into this diner and he easily kills these two aliens with a little stinger thing he has. Oh, my lord. Yeah, and it turns out one of the aliens he killed was actually the emperor of this alien race called the Aquilians. Gotcha. And the emperor had this cat that had the galaxy on his collar, and so obviously the cat is brought along with the alien's corpse to the morgue. Of course, they always bring dead people's pets to the morgue along with their corpses. Right, and so then the bug alien goes to the morgue and threatens the mortician, this lady named Laurel. Her name is Yanni? That's kind of weird. No, it's Laurel. Right, Yanni, that's what I said. Anyway, so then the Aquilians threaten to blow up the planet if the men in black can't deliver the galaxy within an hour. Wow, so I imagine the men in black send out all their men to try to save the day? Nope, literally just the two main characters, one of which is in training. Oh, you'd kind of think they'd put more resources on something like that. Yeah, you'd think so. So how did J and K find out about all this stuff? Well, they go visit the exposition pug. The exposition pug? Yeah, it's this little pug that K shakes until it shouts out all the exposition we need to move the movie forward. Well, that pug sounds like a screenwriter's best friend. It sure is. So then the bug tries to escape on a ship, but the men in black shoot it down. Okay. Yeah, and so they're like, 
like, put your hands on your head. And he's like, okay, but then he slowly rips off the farmer's skin and reveals that he's a super big cockroach monster. Why hasn't he already taken off his human skin if he's trying to escape? So we can have this big reveal. And why didn't J and K shoot him as he was taking the skin off? So we can have this big reveal. Well, okay. So then the bug swallows their guns and K gets intentionally eaten. Does the bug not have teeth? Oh yeah, it has massive teeth, but apparently those are just for show because it swallows K whole. Pretty lucky. Yeah, and so then K shoots the bug from the inside and they save the day. Wow. And then K reveals that he wasn't actually training Jay as a partner, but as a replacement. Wait, what? Yeah, pretty cool, right? So now after like two days on the job, Jay has to find and train a new partner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it have made more sense for K to train two people instead of just Jay? Oh yeah, I guess that would have made a lot more sense. Whoops. Whoopsie. So what do you think of the movie? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun and we should totally get Will Smith to play in this. Oh yeah, people really liked watching him punch aliens in Independence Day. We could totally cash in on that. Yeah, and plus we can get him to make like a theme song. Right, he can literally just rap about things from the movie. Right, he can be like, here's an audio commercial for my movie. Woo, ha ha. If people don't realize that's just a commercial, that's gonna be a number one hit. Definitely, and Will Smith is gonna become synonymous with the men in black. Yeah, we're gonna have to make sure to get him for any sequels and spinoffs moving forward. For sure. Hey guys, it's Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. If you did, let me know in the comments section what other movies you'd like to see pitches for. We also have a lot more of these videos on the channel. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and share on Facebook and Twitter. Just start hitting all the buttons, except hopefully dislike. And as always, check back soon for a new pitch meeting. Bye-bye.